Okay, hello, I am back again with another review for a science curriculum that is for second grade this time. And this is exploring the building blocks of science, grade two. Uh, this was formerly real science for kids. Um, they've now changed their grade level science name to the building blocks for science. Um, and this is now going to be offered through Timberdoodle in their curriculum kits for the secular science kits. So I, I actually got a hold of a sample of this because um, I kind of help our charter school do curriculum research and we were trying to figure out what kind of materials would be needed for this science since a lot of our students use Timberdoodle and they weren't, most of the, the students weren't real happy with the previous science that was included in Timberdoodle. So everybody's real excited to find out about this particular science curriculum. And so it comes highly recommended from various um, like uh, homeschool boards that I'm a part of. Uh, this, a lot of people just have raved about the science curriculum. So I was real excited to get my hands on it. And I thought I would share my thoughts with you guys um, about what's in it and how it's laid out and what I think of it, that sort of thing. So I'll get right to that. Okay, so first of all, let me kind of move these out of the way. This is the student textbook. It's um, written in a nice large font. It's got a lot of color. Uh, it is easy to read. It's written at their level, so a kid, um, kids can read it themselves. And it is broken down into very, very easy to do chunks. Okay, so if you're a family that only does science maybe once a week, I'm not sure that this would work. It looks like it's broken down to, into a five-day week. Um, it actually only has, if I can get to it, 22 uh, chapters. And each one is broken down into five daily lessons. So that would be a five-day week. Now, 22 weeks isn't a full school year for most people. 36 weeks, I think, is considered the standard. So there's definitely some playroom here. I even did some math. And if you were to do a four-day week with science, you'd complete this in 27 and a half weeks. If you were to do science three days a week, you would then complete this in 36.7 uh, weeks. So you could do this three days a week and still complete this for the most part you have a half a week or uh, you know maybe an extra week of, of science if you wanted to do the whole thing if you did three days a week so um, that's kind of cool one thing I've noticed about this science though is that it is very hands-on I've, I've actually never seen a more hands-on science curriculum every single day okay or every single uh, lesson has a science experiment in it And it, you know, might not be anything ground, you know, life changing. You know, it might be just testing out various food items to see if they're sweet or sour. I mean, they're not all going to be in depth, but it is very, very hands on. And just for the second grade, okay, um, I'm going to show you the materials list. It's found in the teacher manual. And the cool thing about this is if you want to look at this um, list at yourself, go to the website, just Google. Uh, the building blocks of science, real science for kids, either one of those, you'll get to the manufacturer's website. And they have the first 20 pages of the teacher manual. They actually have the first 20 pages of all three manuals, the student, the lab, and the teacher. So you can look at that. Um, this tells you the materials list broken down by um, experiment. Okay, you can see right there, there's a lot. And then I'll turn the page. Here is the materials list, complete materials list for the entire course. Um, a lot of these things are e easy to find around the house, but there are some things that are a little more difficult. So part of what I had volunteered to do for my charter was help compile a list of harder to find items so that we could either order or find, um, not order, find, I cannot find actual 
compiled lab kits for this curriculum, at least the building blocks ones. So um, we're going to have to build our own. Um, but I did talk to Home Science Tools, which is a company that supplies science materials for homeschoolers and college colleges and uh, you know various sources. They um, are actually working on compiling a kit for this, and they hope to have it ready for the upcoming school year. So um, they will have kits, obviously, for each of the grades, but I don't know what they're going to include. They're at the very, very beginning stages of even figuring out what they're going to include. So what I did was compile a list of what I thought this, you know, we might need to put in a kit. Let's go over the scope and sequence here real quick, and then I'll end this. My videos get really long. I'm sorry. I just, I'm a curriculum geek. I can't help it. Okay, um, contents. We have chemistry, which is chapter, oh, and chapter one is the tools of science. Then you go into chemistry, chapter two, three, four, five. Then you go into biology, which is six, seven, eight, nine. Go into physics, 10, 11, 12, 13, geology, 14, 15, 16, 17, and astronomy, 18, 19, 20, 21, and then the conclusion, putting it all together. So it's really well done, broken down and easy to swallow chunks. Um, if you wanted to, I mean, I think this is really going to be for the families that are, that are science-y people, you know, or have kids that are just Dig in science, you know, they just want to do science and can't get enough of it. Um, these don't look like they're hard to do, but I know people that only do science maybe once or twice a week. Actually, we're kind of that family. Um, but I love science. But it's just, you know, um, one of those things that <laughs> I, 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 I do, I have to think. Do I want to do a science experiment every day? Um, but if you're one of those families, then this is perfect, absolutely perfect, and um, I'm, I'm very impressed with this. I'm, I'm definitely going to consider it. We kind of made our choice for science for next year. I'm um, this is this is one I hadn't considered, and so I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm, I'm thinking about it. If not for next year, maybe as they get a little older and it becomes um, even more interesting to them, I may consider this because, like, like I said, this goes through. It's got a kindergarten, which is very basic. It doesn't have nearly, all. Well, I think it's just one book. And then first grade through seventh grade is the building blocks. And then going into middle school, it divides into categories, chemistry, physics, um, chemistry, physics, biology, uh, and astronomy. And then I think, of course, high school. I don't know if this has high school. Okay, so real quick, I wanted to go through this lab manual through a typical um, week um, on this in this program because I originally was thinking that there was a daily experiment. There's not. Each lesson revolves around a weekly experiment, and then that experiment basically teaches a, a concept, a scientific concept. So what I'm going to say up front is that it looks like the pattern is that on day two, of this of the lesson you're going to do an experiment um, then on day five you're going to repeat the experiment just for fun and look at it from a different perspective so I guess depending upon the family you might even consider that last one optional so let's just take a quick look here and then we'll be done here so this is experiment four: pink and green together um, the first thing is that you're going to read a little introduction, and then day one, you're going to think about um, the various questions that they're going to be asking related to what's going to be done in the experiment on day two. So in this case, it's going to be about um, acids and bases. So then here is where you do the experiment, and you take the red cabbage juice, and you basically um, determine whether these liquids are going to be acids or bases. You record your observations. Day three, then... Actually, this is part of day two. You've got to do your chart. Then day three, um, they have some questions where you um, write down what you discovered during the experiment. Then on day four, there's a why question, and you have to read and then 
um, do some journaling here and then on day five it's just for fun so usually it, it looks like you redo the experiment in a different way um, and then you do your observations in this area here so um, in this case they want you to find different liquids to mix together and then test with the red cabbage juice indicator so I would think that this one would be optional on some weeks and then some weeks you'd probably think oh no I, I, I want to do this again so it's not as quite intense as I originally thought I originally thought it was a daily experiment it is a it's it's a weekly experiment and each weekly lesson revolves around that experiment so it's still very hands-on though and I, I find that fascinating I really do um, I know my son would love it I have to be the one to decide am I willing to invest the time because um, I have two older ones one this year is physical science the other ones in chemistry we do a lot of labs with between those two so um, next year won't be quite so lab intensive I don't think well I don't know I've got one in physics and one in biology both of those could be lab intensive so that means three um, three would be seriously involved in with lab experiments and so that's my issue but I wanted to at least clarify what this really does entail um, you know on a weekly basis so that you can make an educated decision if this is something you'd want to do I'm very impressed with it though and again I just wanted to share what I had found out and I hope you enjoyed thanks Bye.